These are the most important Sun Devils coming into the program in 2024. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks, as always, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. And, of course, a special shout-out to my everydayers who are here every day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at richiebrad 36 the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Create an account and use the promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Real quick, want to uh, thank you guys for the patience. Uh, this has been a very rough week. Uh, had some family that was not feeling well and in the hospital, but everything's okay. Everything's checked out. Everyone's healthy. Just a little scare. And then I tried to record earlier today and I literally was so congested that I could not speak. Like it was, it was just really bad. I'm still a little iffy there, but we're going to be powering through and we're going to end up having a double feature on Sunday for new year's. We're going to have new year's resolutions for football and for basketball. We're going to split those and have them individual to have some fun. We'll have an episode out on uh, Saturday as well. So we're going to finish the year strong. We're going to get back on track. I uh, appreciate you guys for understanding. Like I said, everything's okay. So moving on and moving upward, let's go ahead and talk some Sun Devils football. Let's talk some guys that are coming to the program and talking about the most important players who are coming in. There's there's some freshmen that are coming in and there's some transfers that are coming in. There's some older transfers. There's some younger transfers. Various positions have been addressed as well. We're going to kind of go through the most important guys here and the ones who stick out the most. This list is not in any particular order. We are going to talk about some of the heavy hitters first, obviously, but there's there's no real order here besides who number one is, and I don't think it's close. I do want to mention as like an honorable mention all of the interior offensive linemen that are coming into the program because there's a lot. There's Samesi Tonga, there's Champ Westbrooks uh, coming in through the recruiting class. There's Shanko, uh, Mach- Matu- Matatia, I believe, Joey Sua. There's a lot of interior offensive line reinforcements that are coming in, and they're coming in seemingly uh, every single day. So, I don't necessarily know how to rank those kids because with six guys coming in, there's there's all sorts of reinforcements. But I do think that we can kind of group them all together until anybody truly stands out or anything like that. Let's go ho- go ahead, excuse me, and hop into our top ten. Number one, it it's it's not close for me. It's really Brown. Brown, the former super high four star slash five star running back recruit. Depending on where you look for your sources, pretty much a five-star in the same way that Jaden Rashado was mostly a five-star throughout majority of the process. Like, Relic Brown is that kind of player. We look at him, and he's Mr. Do-It-All. He can run it. He can catch it. There's prowess in special teams. There's the ability to break off the big play and score a touchdown. He is everything encapsulated in one player. I have talked to some people in hopes that he can be the next Tavon Austin, but Kenny Kenny Dillingham has compared him to Kenneth Gainwell. Gainwell, of course, the running back for the Eagles, who also played in Memphis, was playing under Coach Dillingham when he was working there with Mike Norvell. That's that's good praise. Like I know people are going to hear Kenneth Gamble and they're going to be like, oh, well, he's a middle link running back. And it's like, that's so not the point. Like the point is, this is a guy that you have heard of who has had success and was a very good player in college as well. Like it's not like we just named Joe Schmo. Like we're naming an NFL caliber running back. 
that's very high praise. And somebody that Dillingham got to work with exclusively. Very high praise. This is this is the kind of player that hopefully changes the trajectory of your of your production on offense and gets you back on the right track because there have been a lot of offensive woes and there's been a lot of highs and lows with this team. Hopefully that's not going to be the case moving forward. Hopefully we're going to start seeing a team that is more consistent on the offensive side of the football and can put together some really strong games and really put together some consistent outings. I like the direction that they're going right now. I like that Jaden Rashada is going to be coming back. I like that you've got Cameron Scadaboo and you've got other guys that are returning as well. Hopefully Elijah Badger should be back. There's guys here, but adding Relique Brown to that mix feels like you're giving yourself a really explosive high upside kind of player. This is, like I said, feels like the kind of guy who changes the trajectory of your offensive production. You plug him in, he feels like a superstar in the waiting. He's not the only guy you're bringing into the offense, though. There's plenty of other guys as well. Next guy I want to talk about, of course, is Jaden Fortier. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that I am a big Jaden Fortier guy. This is one of the one of the best tight ends that ASU has pulled in the last several years number one prospect coming out of Oregon, one of the uh, top tight ends in the nation, number 23 in his position, four-star on 24-7, and very high three-star depending on where you look. He's a beast. The only thing that stinks with Fortier is he is going to be recovering from an ACL surgery, so he's not going to be good to go for spring ball. Who knows where he's going to be at for spring, or not spring, uh, training camp. We're kind of in a wait-and-see mode. But when he does get on the field, he's somebody that I I look at as a cornerstone kind of player, especially because he'll be a true freshman and he will hopefully be here for three years, hopefully more, but cross that bridge when we get to it. He feels like a cornerstone here. Relique Brown, I think can be, but I will tell you if he has this unbelievable year, he could very well hop to the pros. 48 we've got for a little bit. I'm looking forward to see what we got with him. But the good news is with him recovering from that knee injury, we can bring him along a little slower and ease him into the lineup, especially because you got Bryce Pierre who's coming back and somebody who I see as one of the more underappreciated players on this team and a potential breakout for the 2024 season. I really like 40A as part of the future. I'm just curious how that role shakes out for him. Another guy I want to mention from this recruiting class, super high upside is Jason Brown, the running back out of Washington, the number 15 running back in the nation, the number four prospect coming out of Washington State. He's a beast. 5'10", 205, does a little bit of everything for you. Brings that flashiness to the backfield that you're looking for for the post-Cameron Scadaboo days because he is coming back for next year. Scadaboo will be returning, but beyond then, it's going to be a little murky because he's also a guy who could jump to the pros. I assume he probably has another year of eligibility. I'm not a hundred percent certain, but either way, you still need guys beyond him. And I like Kyson Brown to potentially be one of those guys, but you're going to match him with Jason Brown and give yourself a little bit of lightning to go with the thunder that Kyson Brown is. You got a really dynamic one, two punch there. And of course, you have Relique Brown, too, as another running back. You got uh, three guys with the last name Brown in the backfield. Clearly, the Sun Devils had some kind of preference there. Uh, If your last name is Brown, you should try out for the team. Maybe they can fit you in at running back. Like I said, it feels like they kind of have a thing there. Or if you just have a last name that's a color in general, because Tevin White is also there. So who knows? Maybe if you're um, something green or... Um, something red or black or white or brown or whatever, you should try out for the team. They might have a spot for you in the backfield. Bottom line, though, like back on track, Jason Brown's a stud. I'm really looking forward to him getting plugged into this offense, potentially seeing some some instant returns on him. I don't know how how much we'll really see from him because right now he's coming in as probably the fourth back on the team behind Scadaboo, behind Kyson, and behind. Carlos Brooks, but at at the same time, he feels like somebody that you're going to really struggle to keep off of the field. 
he's a really good player. There's a reason he's highly recruited. There's a reason he's highly regarded. He's he's another guy like Fortier that I described as a potential cornerstone for the future. I look at him as somebody who is going to be part of the fixture for the Kenny Dillingham era for the next three years, hopefully four years, hopefully five years, whatever. That's how I see Jason Brown coming into this team. Those are three of the guys who really stand out to me, uh, obviously on offense compared to some of the other positions. These are guys that I look at as potential game changers in the offense to be able to get everything back going. Uh, When we come back, we are going to continue looking at some of the more important players. We're going to go ahead and flip to the secondary, take a look at some of the more important guys that are coming in uh, through the transfer portal that could be major impacts for the Sun Devils. This is the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying your tickets for the next big event, whether it's music, comedy, sports, or theater events. Game time is fast and easy way to get those tickets with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. See that view from your seat before you buy, and that way you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And those all-in prices I mentioned, they're going to show the total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal without any hidden fees. You can get those tickets in seconds. It's just two easy taps. They've got tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find those last-minute tickets so you're not stressing out with exclusive flash deals, and sponsored deals for tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more, and zone deals. So you can pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And again, that Game Time guarantee means you're getting the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and and row for less, Game Time's going to credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thanks again, as always, for tuning in and making the Locked On Sunnivals podcast your first listen of the day. A special shout out, as always, to my everydayers who are here every day as well. And I encourage you guys to check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. If you have not checked it out already, and even more importantly, check out the YouTube channel where we've got the 24-7 streaming on Locked On Sports. It's it's really cool. If you're looking for something to get you through those long drives on the road, if you're looking for something to ease you into your sleep at night, put it on. It's the biggest stories of the day from all our national shows. Check it out. It's awesome. Subscribe to it. Back into our conversation. There's a lot of guys that are coming in through the secondary here that are going to provide some reinforcements. There are three main guys, I will tell you, that are coming in through the transfer portal in the secondary that I think are very worth noting. We'll go ahead and start with the biggest name of the bunch, which is Kamari Wilson. Wilson is a former super high four-star safety who played at Florida. Uh, part of the 2022 class, I believe. He is, look, here's what I'll tell you. If Florida is recruiting you to play in the secondary, that's very good news because Florida, they know what they're doing when it comes to their defensive backs. Like they get a lot of guys that go to the pros. Like you've got tons of safeties, especially like you've had Marcus May. They put in Matt Elam for what it's worth. Uh, They put in Keanu Neal. They've, they put in no shortage of safety talent into the pros. What they did with that is up to them, but they get them there. Kamari Wilson is somebody that they recruited and somebody who was very highly recruited again. He, he could find himself a niche with this team. The way I see it, and I've mentioned this on the podcast before, is Wilson, if, if he pans out, obviously, if he pans out, could put you in a situation where you are able to run three safety sets and you kind of have somebody like Shamari Simmons plays a little more of a nickel role because they mean Alfred is coming back and Alfred is absolutely a plug and play for the team. And I think that Simmons has done everything to retain a starting role. 
But if Kamari Wilson plays the way that we're anticipating him to play, you're going to have a really difficult time keeping him off the field. He's that kind of caliber of player. He's a special talent. He's somebody that I think can be altering to the secondary. The, the talent's there. The athleticism is there. The upside is there. Now it's just a matter of figuring out if he can play football at a high enough level. It just kind of happens when you go to those SEC programs and especially programs that recruit positions as well as Florida does with their safety spot. It it, it happens. You're, you're going to have a difficult time trying to get onto the field. That was the case for Kamari Wilson. Hopefully he can find himself a little spot at Arizona State. He's going to be facing competition. It's not going to be easy for him. You got Josiah Cox is returning as well. Uh, Montana Warren is coming back, returning from injury. It's not as though he's coming here and he's going to be guaranteed a spot, but he'll find it an easier competition than it was at Florida. We'll see. Two other guys I want to talk about. These are corners in particular. The first one is uh, LaTerrence Welsh. Welsh is coming from LSU, another four-star recruit out of high school. Didn't get as much starting time as he would have liked to at LSU, which kind of seems to be the case. And what I said for Florida, you could definitely say that is the case for LSU as well. They have also put in some very good corners over the years. Like uh, Derek Stingley has turned into a superstar at the next level, but they've put in other guys too. Greedy Williams has come out of that program. Um, God, I don't have a list in front of me. I'm not naming Tyron Matthew. I'm not naming Patrick Peterson. Those are those are S-tier kind of players. Those are future Hall of Fame kind of players. Uh, Tredavious White. Like, they they put in talent. LaTerrence Welch definitely was somebody who envisioned himself there, but when he can't get onto the field, it just happens. So he comes to Arizona State with a team that is reloading at the corner position. You lose Roe Torrance. You lose... Uh, D Ford, you lose Jordan Clark. You have three starting spots that are open and Welsh is easily one of your best options right now to plug and play him into that secondary. It would be, it would be pretty much on him if he were to come to this program and not be one of the top two, top three corners on this team. There's no reason that he shouldn't be able to come here and be that high on the depth chart and just work his way into a full-time role. I think you're going to see quite a bit of rotation. There's other guys we're going to talk about here that are also coming in uh, through the recruiting class that are worth noting as well. It's, It's going to be a really good iron sharpens iron room. The last guy I want to talk about is, excuse me, is uh, Javen Robinson corner coming from Wazoo. Uh, Look, he was recruited by Brian Ward coming out of high school. He is a redshirt sophomore, redshirted his only year there under Brian Ward. And then last year had a decent little outing for the team. Uh, Nothing outstanding, but definitely enough to where it warrants some attention to kind of be like, oh, hey, we should keep an eye on this kid. I think that you look at Robinson as, as somebody that is also a potential plug and play starter for the team. You're replacing a lot of guys like Ed Woods is coming back. He's he's arguably your top corner right now, but then you have Welsh and you have Robinson that are going to come in and make really good arguments to be the starting corners there as well. For you to have those three guys is, is going to be a really good, uh, a really good transition for you, especially if everybody pays out. Robinson is really interesting to me. He, uh, here, here's the thing is, we haven't been able to see too much of Robinson yet because he's going into his redshirt sophomore year. I feel like if this is somebody that Brian Ward is recruiting, though, that this is somebody that that has an opportunity to step into the secondary and be a starter for the team. We'll wait and see. Again, there's a lot of guys that are coming into the secondary right now that are all really noteworthy that need to have conversations made about them. Robinson is not somebody that I think we should forget about. And he's definitely somebody that has really piqued my interest, but there's a handful of other guys that I want to talk to you guys about as well. As we begin to wrap up this edition of the locked on some of us podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. 
As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide variety of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. One more time, wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. A special shout out again to my everydayers who are here every day. And another shout out to the Locked On Sports Today YouTube channel with the first ever 24-7 streaming. All your big stories. So if you watch Thursday Night Football and you saw the Browns clinch the playoff spot, guess what? They're going to be talking about it. So make sure you tune in. Make sure you subscribe 24-7. There's never been anything like it. We're going to wrap up with four more players that are going to be coming in to this program, whether it's the transfer portal, whether it's the recruiting class. These guys, I think you've got two starters here and you've got two guys that are going to be really important for creating a competition. We'll go ahead and start with the starters and we'll start with the one that is the most like unexciting because he's a punter, but Kenyon Floyd. I've been hyping Floyd up. He's he's a player that can flip field position. He's somebody that Arizona State desperately needed this past year. You need good punting, especially when you have an offense that has as many growing pains as the Sun Devils have. The odds are this is not going to be an elite offense again in 2024. You're hoping to see some really good strides forward. There's There's really... Not much worse than you can do from last year. There was some good things, but there was a lot of bad that was in that offense last year. So the bar is pretty low heading into this year. But nonetheless, you still need to find a way to uh, find some success. But even if you don't, then you need to have a reliable special teams that can give your defense a little bit more of a chance than what they were given last year. The defense played great last year, and that's with an offense and a special teams unit that was constantly leaving them out to dry plug in Floyd. He's, he's got a very good chance to be your starting punter from day one, five star special teams, kid, three star overall. He's a stud. One of the top prospects in Arizona, I believe horizon was where he was coming from. I've got it in front of me here. Uh, yeah. Horizon high school out in Scottsdale. So, you know, activate the Valley. Number four overall punter in the nation. Number 53 prospect in the state of Arizona. He's going to come in and be one of the most important kids. I understand it's a punter. It's not exciting, but he is so, so beyond important for this team. Definitely looking forward to him. Another guy I want to mention who's a starter for me is uh, Keyshawn Elliott. Linebacker coming from New Mexico. Dude was hyper productive this past season for the for the Lobos had 110 tackles, I believe Um, 110 tackles or excuse me, 111 tackles, two and a half sacks, a forced fumble, six pass deflections. He's six, three, two twenty-five, So he's not exactly a small kid and he's only going into his junior season. Great news. This is somebody that you can hopefully have for two years, maybe three years, depending on eligibility, which I can never keep up with, but He's got to be one of the biggest gets for you so far. Somebody who's got the production, somebody who's got the starting experience to plug into this defense. You've done a good job adding guys as well. Like he's not the only one who's coming into the transfer portal. Uh, You've got Cyrus Fiasu and you've got Jordan Crook as well that are coming in from San Diego State and from Arkansas respectively. But uh, Elliott has the most playtime experience here. I think that this is potentially, potentially your replacement for Travian Brown. I don't know how confident I am in that because Brown was just so important to what you did last year. From a production standpoint, I think he's that guy. From a leadership standpoint, yet to be seen. It's going to be very difficult, which is where you've got Fiasu and where you've got uh, Crook to be able to provide that competition as well. But right now, I look at Keyshawn as a plug-and-play starter for the team. Two more guys I want to mention here as we wrap this up. The first guy, Chris Johnson Jr., 
another freshman who's coming in. He's a corner out of Texas. He actually just won the uh, state championship over in Alito. 6'1", 180, really high three-star kid. Uh, top 100 prospect in Texas, number 52 overall as a corner in the nation. This is a kid that you're going to be building your future around. Similar to what I said about 40 age, similar to what I said about Jason Brown. But on the defensive side of the football, this feels like one of your cornerstones. This feels like somebody that, yes, is probably going to be developed behind the scenes. Would not be surprised if he was redshirted this year simply because there's so many guys coming in and there's so many veterans that are coming here. There's veterans that are returning. But I also feel like Chris Johnson Jr. could very easily be somebody that you have a difficult time keeping off the field. He's a stud. I'm really excited about him. He's not the only one either. You got Rodney Bamaj that's coming in, who's actually ranked a little bit higher than Chris Johnson Jr. You got Tony Lewis and Cuba who's coming in. There's there's a lot of corners that are coming into uh, Arizona State this year that are going to be able to provide all sorts of competition for each other. The iron sharpens iron. You'll have uh, Mason Williams is back as well. Uh, oh, man, I can't think of guys off the top of my head. There's there's a lot of guys that are going to be coming back for this program next year. Uh, Harlan Rashada is coming back. Or Roman Rashada, excuse me. Roman Rashada is coming back. Harlan was a dad. There's, there's good depth here. There's good talent. Chris Johnson Jr. I have a sneaky feeling he's going to be really difficult to keep off the field. Last guy I want to mention is quarterback Sam Leavitt transferring in from Michigan State was a four-star uh, quarterback coming out of last year's class. So the 2023 cycle, he's going to be the perfect competition for Jaden Rashada. They're both the same year. They're both guys who have really good upside and potential to be the, the I don't want to call him the face, but the the guy who runs everything, essentially. I don't want to call him the face of the offense because that's very lazy, and I've said that multiple times. He feels like somebody who can lead it very effectively, though. Somebody who can essentially be that that kind of... Again, I'm, I'm trying not to call him a face, but that's what they feel like for Kenny Dillingham right now. Sam Leavitt, very talented kid. I don't know if he has a starting future at Arizona State, but what I do know is he's going to come in and he's going to push Jaden Rashada to be his absolute best. Because if Rashada is not his absolute best, then leave it's going to be right on his tail. And I think that's the best thing that you can do right now because Trenton Borgay is going into his last year. And quite frankly, I just don't know how much actual playing time he still has for the team. I feel like he's definitely going to be taking a back seat very, very soon. Rashada, obviously the penned in starter for now, but leave it is going to be the guy that makes sure that Rashada is constantly going to be giving his best in practice in the off season, in spring ball, in camp T during the season, leave. It's going to be the guy that makes sure that Rashada is always going to be performing at his best. He's going to make sure that he's uncomfortable, but in a good way, uncomfortable in a good way. Cause you want that competition. You want those guys to feel like they always have to be doing their best. You don't want them to be comfortable. That's what I think Sam Levitt does for you. Those are the 10 guys that I think are the most important players coming to the program, whether it's through the transfer portal, whether it is through the recruiting class. I'm curious who you guys are most excited about. I'm curious who you guys think are the most important players, but I also am curious who you guys think are the most important returning players because that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. So wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Of course, you can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at RichieBrad36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Doubles. Guys, as always, I appreciate you for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out, as always, to my everydayers who are here every day. Again, I appreciate your patience for, you know, the... The lack of content that's been coming up. There's just a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. I appreciate your understanding. I'm going to be getting back on schedule here. Like I said, we'll be back again tomorrow and then a double feature on Sunday. 
for New Year's Eve where we're going to be making some New Year's resolutions for the football team and for the basketball team. So make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you then. Till then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Levels.